Let's talk about charging. When the subject of EVs comes up, the first question I get is, what is its range? But how long it needs to be plugged into the wall to get that range is also important. But what if you could swap out the power pack on your vehicle? That's what you can do with the Zero FX with its modular battery system. It's a fun commuter bike that's at home in the city as well as on dirt trails. But all that fun coupled with hassle-free charging, that's gonna cost you. At the heart of the bike are two removable batteries. Now, being able to take one of the batteries out at a time opens it up to a lot of possibilities. For example, if you're doing laps somewhere, you can have one battery charging while you're riding with the other one. Or if you decide to go on a very long road trip and you have a chase vehicle, you could have the car charging a battery while the other one you're riding on. Or maybe you're just impatient, and after you get home from a very long ride, you decide, you know what, you just want to hop right back on the bike without thinking about charging. You can do that with this bike, but it'll cost you. First off, additional batteries cost $2,895 each. The base model of this bike with a single 3.2 kilowatt hour battery is $8,495. So yeah, batteries are still expensive. But riding one of these bikes is amazing thanks to all that EV torque. The FX has 78 foot-pounds of torque and 48 horsepower with the 7.2 kilowatt hour battery system. For a quick comparison, the gas-powered Kawasaki KLR650 has 36 horsepower and 33.4 foot-pounds of torque. That means in sport mode, if you're not careful, you can flip the FX. Sure, that sounds a bit terrifying, but for people like me, it's great. The bike handles well, and because it's basically a light dual sport, it's really fun off-road. But let's be serious, you're gonna spend most of your time on asphalt, and because it doesn't have a transmission or a clutch, it's actually very easy to ride, which makes it a fun little bike to do commuting or quick jaunts around town. It only weighs 289 pounds, so it's nimble enough for lane splitting if you live in California and just general city riding everywhere else. It has a city range of 91 miles, but the highway range is only 39 miles. Now, why the huge discrepancy? Well, first off, all EVs, once you get them on the freeway, they just burn through the battery. But more importantly, this. I'm a huge meat slab and I'm not very aerodynamic and also neither are you. The combined range is about 54 miles, which is on par, give or take a few miles, with what I got in mixed riding around San Francisco with jaunts to Oakland on the highway. Which brings us back to charging. To fill both 3.6 kilowatt hour batteries takes about nine and a half hours via a regular home outlet, which the bike just plugs into using the same cable as your desktop computer. And that's where the modular batteries come in. You can remove them and charge them, but it's gonna cost you an extra $600 to get the charging accessory. So the question is, do you need a modular battery system? I say for most commuters, a bike that has a 50 to 60 mile range should be adequate. Plus, when you get home at night, you can just plug it in, and the next morning when you hop on it, it has 100% and it's ready to go. The modular system seems like it's best suited for the police, rangers, and really any sort of situation where you need to be able to keep the bike moving without any downtime. The 7.2 kilowatt hour non-modular battery Zero FX will cost you $10,500. Now that's a lot of money, but remember, batteries are very expensive. And in a world where a ton of us are stuck behind the wheel of cars during a very boring commute, it's nice to know that there are options, fun options, that'll get us to and from work and be a little bit more green.